everybody. I wanted to get right into the subject matter today. I did a blog post the other day about the power and the problem of beauty. And I wanted to get into it because as a coach, there is this fine line between what do we want to change and what do we want to just accept. So specifically talking about body image, how do you know how to find the sweet spot between accepting yourself as you are and acknowledging that how you look matters, it matters to you and it matters to other people. So what is the balance between those things? Do you change yourself in order to have people receive you the way you want to be received? Or do you learn to accept yourself as you are? Now, it seems like it wouldn't be so complicated, but it does get complicated when you're trying to find the balance between the ideal and what's actual reality. So when you talk about beauty, beauty actually matters. It, it matters because it's not just about what other people think about you. There is something innate to beauty that, in my opinion, is associated with God. The tagline on my website, and I'm an artist as well, so the tagline on my website is beauty is God, because I believe that. I believe that when, whenever we behold something that's beautiful, and that could be a human being, it could be a landscape, it could be a baby, it could be an idea, it can be a poem, it can be a piece of literature, it can be a thought. We describe thoughts as beautiful or ugly, right? So beauty is more than just something superficial. Beauty is something that is tied, in my opinion, to the everlasting, to the infinite, to God, right? Whatever you want to call God, it's something that reminds us of the sublime. So when we behold beauty, we elevate beyond the day-to-day -day and the common and the squalid and the mean, and we elevate our minds to match that which we are beholding that is beautiful. So when we're talking about ourselves and we're trying to figure out, okay, let's say, for example, you want to work on your body image. You look at yourself and you don't feel that you are beautiful in your own eyes, right? So what is the balance between that feeling of wanting to fix something about yourself and wanting to actually accept the way you are here and now. My argument is that you can't have one without the other. You can't fix yourself, quote unquote, if you don't accept yourself the way you are. The reason being is that God in its infinite nature accepts us exactly how we are. And not only that, sees the beauty in where we are right here and right now. So it's not like one day after you fix yourself up, you will be beautiful. You are beautiful now. It's just that the way you've been defining it is narrow and it's limited and it's not taking into account the fullness of who you are. If you don't accept that first, you can't then go on to modify yourself in a way that is sustainable and healthy and life-giving. Now saying that you can change yourself and fix yourself in ways that are not sustainable, that are not life-giving, that are not elevated, you can have plastic surgery. And I'm not saying you, you know, there's something wrong with plastic surgery, but it's a violent way to fix something that probably isn't broken, right? Unless we're talking about something um, that's beyond cosmetic, that's actually a health issue or some, some abnormality or just restoring yourself to what you were before. But if you're trying to suck fat out, eliminate the signs of aging, these kinds of things, that's a very violent way to go about it. And while there's nothing wrong with it, quote unquote, it isn't sustainable because aging is a fact of life and fat is not the enemy. And besides, fat will reappear in other areas where you haven't sucked it out from, which is a little known fact about liposuction, but that's a completely other topic. Though the fat will just show up in other places that are strange or bizarre. 
right? So once you accept and begin to love and see the beauty of where you are right now, then you can go about loving yourself into an evolving expression of how you want to be. And you have to start by seeing yourself the way you want to see yourself. So you're going to have to behold your beauty now because if you approach it from a point of, I'm ugly, I hate myself, I wanna get over here where I think I belong, somewhere that isn't where you are, some fictional idea of what beauty is, if that's what you're focusing on, and you're not beholding the beauty of where you are now, you're going to constantly be in this fight with yourself that isn't going to work. And that's where the diet industry gets it wrong and that's why it's a never ending money pit for people and time pit because most people approach it in a way that isn't sustainable because they think they have to choose between becoming who they wanna be you know, healthier version of themselves, a more beautiful version of themselves. They think that they have to choose between that and accepting themselves. And again, my argument is that you can't have one without the other. So how do you go about that? How do you both accept yourself for where you are and also evolve into a higher expression of yourself? I argue that that's what we do over our entire lives without thinking about it with things that we don't have an emotional charge over. So when you were a child or a teenager, you knew that one day you would be an adult. You And you may have looked forward to certain aspects of becoming an adult, like being able to legally drink or you know, being able to vote or getting married to your fiance or what, whatever it is, something that's that's out there somewhere for you when you become an adult that's not available to you as a child but you didn't hate every second of being a child or a teenager. You weren't resentful of yourself for being a child. You didn't feel like there was something wrong. You just knew that, okay, when I get older, you know, and you may have even said to yourself, when I get older, I'm gonna leave home and I'm gonna do X, Y, and Z and, and I'm gonna live somewhere else. And you had all these dreams, but you didn't have contempt for who you are as a young person, who you were as a young person. So my argument is that it's the same thing. If you have weight to lose, if you have something about yourself that you would like to um, modify or evolve or change, if you would like to be more beautiful, if you'd like to be more fit, if you would like to be slimmer, it's fine to want that. There's nothing wrong or unspiritual about wanting that because again, there's something in us that loves beauty, that craves beauty, that is elevated by witnessing beauty. So the fact that you want to see that when you look in the mirror, there's nothing wrong with that. What's wrong is to have contempt for who you are now and to be unable to see the beauty in who you are right here and right now. Because as long as you are at war with what is, you cannot attract what is to be. Because there is no way to evolve and resist at the same time. You have to let go of one or the other. So if you let go of resistance, you get a chance to evolve. If you want to hold on to resistance, then you aren't going to revolt, to evolve. You're going to continually be in this mad battle and you're going to go back and forth because in your mind, you're beholding and you're thinking about what you have contempt for. So you're going to keep returning to that place because the principle of the law of attraction says that what you behold is what you bring into your life. Now, I don't believe the law of attraction is a law per se, but it is a principle that holds up under scrutiny. So if you're constantly thinking about what's wrong, you're going to keep finding things that are wrong, no matter what you look like. And that's why a lot of times people will have plastic surgery and still be upset. They still hate themselves. They still hate what they see in the mirror or lose weight and still feel overweight, still feel unsatisfied. So you've got to approach it from a point of, I love and embrace that which is, and I am excited about becoming even more of who I am. I am excited about evolving into the next level of myself. From that energy, from that standpoint, there's nothing that you can't do. 
because you are beholding that which hasn't come to pass yet in physical reality, but it's a firm concept in your mind. You can see the beauty that, that wants to evolve. You can see the you that you're becoming and you're not mad and you're not resentful. And you look at yourself and you're like, okay, I would let, for example, I would like to be skinnier, but wow, I've got beautiful hair. I've got beautiful eyes. I have a beautiful smile. I'm kind. People feel great when they're around me. You're, you're building yourself up because from that energy, that is beauty. And from beauty, beauty evolves. Okay. So beauty matters, but it's not the commercial image of beauty. The commercial image of beauty is there to sell stuff to you that you don't need. Okay. The spiritual concept of beauty is something that is real and is something that we all crave and strive for. And you can have that 100%. So that's all I have for you today. I'm inviting you to join my newsletter where you can have more access to content like this, more motivating content that's specifically for subscribers. And I am blessed to have you here in this space. Thank you for listening and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.